1. Precision Blocks at Pumapunku The mystery begins with accuracy. The Pumapunku complex in Bolivia contains andesite blocks cut with tolerances measured in millimeters, forming perfectly straight grooves, interlocking joints, and geometric recesses that match like machine parts. Built around 500 CE by the Tiwanaku culture, the blocks show cutting precision inconsistent with the hammerstones and bronze tools known from the region. Archaeologists recorded H-shaped blocks forming modular patterns, each side featuring right angles and parallel cuts that maintain Contained consistent depth along their entire length. Some blocks contain drill-like circular holes spaced at exact intervals. Andesite, a hard volcanic rock, requires sustained force or abrasion to shape, yet no copper saws, abrasives, or large-scale shaping tools have been recovered from Taiwanaku sites. Experimental archaeology reproduces some cuts but not the uniformity found in the original blocks. Transport adds another layer of difficulty. Many stones weigh 50 to 80 tons and were moved from a quarry on the other side of Lake Titicaca. The route includes steep terrain and uneven ground, with no evidence of wheels or draft animals. With incomplete tool remains, no construction inscriptions, and no clear quarry to site logistics, the methods used to shape and assemble Puma Punku's precision blocks remain unexplained. 2. Pillars Built Before Civilization The mystery begins with chronology. Gobekli Tepe in southeastern Turkey features circular enclosures of T-shaped limestone pillars weighing up to 20 tons, built around 9,600 BCE, thousands of years before agriculture, pottery, or settled village life appeared in the region. The site predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years, yet demonstrates organized labor, advanced stone shaping, and symbolic art. Archaeologists documented more than 200 pillars across multiple enclosures, each carved with reliefs of animals such as snakes, foxes, boars, and vultures. Some pillars contain abstract symbols arranged in patterns, while others depict humanoid forms. Excavations show no domestic structures, hearths, or agricultural debris, indicating the site served purely ceremonial or ritual purposes. The surrounding region shows only small bands of hunter-gatherers at the time. The site was intentionally buried around 8,000 BCE under thousands of tons of soil and debris, preserving the pillars in near-perfect condition. Soil analysis suggests coordinated backfilling, not natural collapse. With no written records, no predecessor sites revealing engineering development, and no clear social hierarchy in the region, the reason hunter-gatherers constructed and then buried such massive structures remains unknown. 3. Stones too heavy for Rome The mystery begins with scale. The Trilithon platform at Baalbek's Temple of Jupiter in Lebanon contains three limestone blocks weighing between 800 and 1,000 tons each, far beyond the lifting capacity of known Roman cranes, which maxed out around 50 to 60 tons. Yet these stones were precisely precisely fitted into a high retaining wall laid on top of earlier foundations. Archaeologists mapped the quarry 800 meters away, where the stone of the pregnant woman and two even larger blocks remain partially detached, weighing up to 1,650 tons. Tool marks show ancient extraction, but no ramps, sledges, or roadbeds capable of supporting such loads survive along the route to the temple. Soil compaction studies indicate no heavy transport corridor. The trilithon blocks themselves sit in tight alignment with joints less than a centimeter wide. Roman construction records make no reference to the platform, and the architectural style differs from typical Roman retaining walls. Later cultures built atop the foundation, but left no information about the original builders. With no transport equipment, no load distribution systems, and no clear engineering sequence in the archaeological record, the method used to move and position Baalbek's multi-ton stones remains unresolved. 4. A subterranean temple out of time. The mystery begins with style. The Osirion at Abydos, Egypt, a subterranean chamber built with 60 to 70 ton granite blocks, features architectural forms dramatically different from the New Kingdom Temple of Seti the one above it. Although traditionally attributed to Seti I, 1290 to 1279 BCE, its megalithic construction resembles Egypt's Old Kingdom style from over a thousand years earlier. The Osirion sits nearly 20 meters below ground level in a trench lined with massive granite pillars and lintels. The chamber includes a central rectangular island surrounded by a water-filled moat, suggesting symbolic or ritual function. Excavation Excavations show the megaliths were precisely leveled despite the uneven bedrock. Granite of this scale had to be quarried at Aswan, over 800 kilometers upriver, and transported against the Nile current. Textual evidence complicates dating. Seti once inscriptions appear only on upper components, while the core megaliths lack royal cartouches or quarry marks. Geological studies reveal deep sediment layers accumulated long after construction, indicating the Osirion may predate Seti Thurn's temple by centuries or even millennia. With uncertain chronology, mixed architecture, Textual styles and no construction records, the true age and purpose of the Osirian 
remain unknown. 5. Granite blocks across a river. The mystery begins with transport. Olantai Tambo, a high-altitude Inca site in Peru's Sacred Valley, contains pink rhyolite blocks weighing 50 to 70 tons that were quarried on a mountainside across the Urubamba River. To reach the fortress terraces, the stones had to be dragged down the quarry slope, moved across the valley floor, and somehow transported over a river with no preserved bridge remains from the period. Archaeologists traced quarry scars and partially shaped blocks at Cachicata, demonstrating where the stones originated. The route from quarry to site includes steep switchbacks and uneven terrain, making large-scale sledges nearly impossible to maneuver. Experimental archaeology shows that even with hundreds of workers, controlling a 50-ton block on such slopes risks catastrophic loss. Some abandoned stones show impact fractures consistent with transport accidents. At the site, the blocks were lifted into multi-level terraces with tight-fitting joints and finely dressed faces. No evidence of metal tools suitable for shaping rhyolite has been found, and no ramps or staging platforms survive. The combination of quarry location, river crossing, slope management, and precision placement remains only partially understood. With incomplete transport infrastructure and no written engineering accounts, Olantai Tambo's construction methods remain unresolved. A fortress of interlocking stones. The mystery begins with fit. The Cyclopean walls of Saksai Huaman above Cusco are built from polygonal limestone blocks weighing up to 120 tons, cut so precisely that blades, wires, or even paper cannot pass between the joints. Constructed during the late Inca period, around 1400 to 1500 CE, the walls show no mortar, yet remain stable after centuries of earthquakes. Archaeologists documented blocks with more than a dozen angles, each shaped to interlock with surrounding stones. Some surfaces show pecking marks consistent with hammerstone shaping, but the uniform smoothness of other faces suggests additional finishing methods. The walls curve in a zigzag pattern, distributing seismic forces and reducing collapse risk. Despite extensive study, no toolkits survived that explain how such precise multi-angle cuts were achieved at this scale. Quarry evidence indicates stones were sourced from the nearby Rumikolka site, but transport and on-site placement remain unclear. The largest stones required long-distance hauling and careful positioning on sloped ground. With no scaffolding remains, no pulley systems, and no codified engineering manuals from the Inca era, the techniques used to shape and lock Sasai Huaman's massive blocks remain unknown. Granite boxes with machine-level interiors. The mystery begins with finish. The Serapeum of Saqqara in Egypt contains 24 massive granite sarcophagi, each weighing 60 to 80 tons, carved from single blocks of granite or diorite. Their interiors are polished to mirror-like smoothness, with corners approaching perfect right angles, a level of precision difficult to achieve even with modern diamond abrasives. The boxes were transported into underground tunnels with ceilings only slightly wider than the boxes themselves. Archaeologists recorded tool marks consistent with large pounding stones on exterior surfaces, but the interior polish shows no clear sequence of finishing tools. The lid to box fit is so tight that modern teams struggle to insert feeler gauges between them. Granite from Aswan had to be quarried, shaped, and hauled more than 800 kilometers north before final installation. The tunnel layout leaves little maneuvering room for moving multi-ton lids into position. No inscriptions appear inside the boxes, and only a few contain minimal hieroglyphic markings. Their intended function is attributed to the burial of apis bulls, yet no mummified remains survive in the boxes themselves. With incomplete tool evidence, unclear finishing sequences, and limited space for ancient lifting systems, the exact methods used to shape, transport, and position the Serapium's granite sarcophagi remain unexplained. Precision hidden in the pyramid core. The mystery begins beneath the casing. Inside the Great Pyramid of Giza, core masonry blocks show dimensional consistency and placement accuracy that surpasses typical Old Kingdom construction. While the outer casing stones demonstrate well-known precision, the inner core, normally concealed behind them, contains blocks fitted with uniform joints and consistent leveling across large sections, despite being positioned deeper within the structure. Archaeologists examining interior chambers documented straight cuts, flat bedding surfaces, and casing-like tolerances in areas inaccessible accessible to finishers after block placement. Some interior blocks show faces that appear pre-shaped to align with blocks not yet installed, suggesting coordinated planning rather than on-site adjustment. The Grand Gallery's core-belled vault, constructed with granite beams weighing up to 40 tons, maintains alignment along its full 46-meter length. No detailed construction plans survive, and no records describe how surveyors established internal alignment before finishing the outer surfaces. Experimental reconstructions replicate some aspects, but cannot explain the uniform precision across concealed sections. With no written engineering texts and limited direct access to many interior areas, the methods used to achieve the Great Pyramid's internal tolerances remain only partly understood.
Stones too large to move. The mystery begins with magnitude. The Yangshan Quarry near Nanjing, China, contains three unfinished stone blocks, the stele base, the stele body, and the stele head, that together would have weighed more than 16,000 tons if completed. Commissioned during the early 15th century by the Yongle Emperor, work stopped when engineers realized the blocks were too large to transport from the quarry to their intended memorial site. Archaeologists measured the stele base at approximately 30 meters long, 13 meters thick, and over 8 meters tall. Tool marks indicate sustained chiseling using iron implements, but no ancient transport infrastructure exists around the quarry. Moving even the smallest block would have required logistics far beyond the capabilities of Ming-era technology, including load-bearing roads, scaffold systems, and waterborne transport that did not exist at the necessary scale. Historical records confirm the project's cancellation, but do not detail the decision-making process behind the attempt. The quarry's terrain is uneven, with steep slopes preventing sledges or rollers from being used, with no written engineering plans, no feasibility studies preserved, and no comparable undertaking elsewhere in China. The motivations and methods for shaping the world's largest known quarried stones remain unclear. Cities carved beneath the earth. The mystery begins underground. In Turkey's Cappadocia region, ancient engineers carved multi-level underground cities such as Derinkuyu and Kaimakli, creating networks of tunnels, ventilation shafts, kitchens, stables, and communal rooms extending more than 60 meters below the surface. The earliest construction layers date to the first millennium BCE, but some tunnels may be older, predating written records of the region's settlement. Archaeologists documented complex airflow systems using narrow shafts that maintained stable oxygen levels throughout the cities. Stone doors, circular discs weighing up to 500 kilograms, were installed at choke points to seal corridors from invaders. The tunnels show consistent ceiling heights and smooth wall finishes despite being cut into soft volcanic tuff, which requires careful excavation to prevent collapse. No large dumps of excavated debris have been identified in nearby valleys. Occupation layers show repeated use across centuries, but no inscriptions identify the planners or the initial construction phases. Geological studies confirm the structures were carved intentionally, not expanded from natural caves. With no preserved engineering manuals, unclear excavation sequences, and missing spoil deposits, the full process behind Cappadocia's underground city networks remains unresolved.